Hey everyone, so for today I got some more information on Atlas Earth in Canada. So if you watched the last video, the first look, go ahead and take a look at the top right there. Uh, there should be a card that will link you to that. Today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the math behind the tiers in Canada. And the best strategies a Canadian should make in Atlas Earth and how it differs from the United States. I was also going to do one for the rest of the world, but they haven't brought out the boost tiers, at least as of the time of this recording. Fingers crossed that when I release my optimal strategy guide in July, we will have that taken care of. But for now, let's take a look at Canada. So before we begin, I do want to make a term change to the channel effective immediately. You will see these three new terms I'm using. They used to be called newbies, regulars, and whales. Um, obviously newbies talking about those that were trying to get to 150 parcels, whales, those that made it to the 2x tier safely, and then everyone in between I called the regulars. Well, the thing is, whale was a specific term we used at a time when it was nearly impossible to get to the 2x tier of the game without paying massive amounts of cash, but after time and thanks to minigames, this is no longer the case. So I have replaced them instead with the terms early game, mid game, and late game. In the optimal strategy guide come July, when I release the fourth edition, I will change the terms there too. Early game players are those who go up to the first tier without max badges. Mid game players I see as from that point to the 2x tier. And then late game players are from 2x tier on. So first off, the ads. The ads for Canada will give you one Atlas buck per ad instead of two in the US. This sets the basis that Canadians can hustle to receive a parcel every other day rather than every day. Kind of expected this was going to happen with them, partially because nobody pays more for ads than the US, and partially because I'm pretty sure Atlas Reality is trying to find ways to slow down the amount of Atlas bucks that are being given out. Second, the boost tier. Um, here is where we really are going to get into the math and figure out the lines for an early game, mid game, and late game player. So, with Canada, things are significantly different to the U.S. In the U.S., a strong tip for newbie slash early game players is to go to the 30x tier and stay there. And this is because at the 30x tier, the parcel power, that is the number of parcels you have times your boost tier, that a player in the U.S. would have at 150 would be 4,500. 30 times 150 is 4,500. And that is higher than any tier below it until you get to 3x where it is equal. So going to 30x, grabbing the badge, and staying there is actually a pretty viable strategy. With Canada, however, it's a little different. The highest tier is 20x in Canada, and the cutoff for it is at 65 parcels. This gives you a maximum parcel power of 1300. Then you will drop to 10x, and the limit at 10x is 150, which puts you at 1500. Now there's only two more tiers following this. You have the 6x tier, which stops at 250 parcels, and the 2x tier for 250 and beyond. To be honest, this means that an early game Canadian player who is early game shouldn't stop at the top tier at just 65, where the parcel power is only 1300, but rather go all the way to 150 in the 10x tier. A mid-game player will mean the same definition as a US player, where you stop at the last tier before the ending tier of 2x. In Canada's place, that is the 6x tier, putting a Canadian player at 250. So after getting the 101 badges, they should aim for another 100 parcels to finish up mid-game. Finally, end game is the number of parcels it would take on average at 2x to equal the tier before it, and there isn't much of a difference here from them and the United States. This is where parcel power comes to play. You're going to take the 1500 parcel power and divide it by 2x and you get 750 parcels without super rent boosts compared to 2250 in the United States. Now I haven't gotten confirmation at the time of this video if we have super rent boosts or not in Canada and at what multiplier as it was heavily rumored Canada would only be getting 40x super boosts rather than 50x. So to give you a little guideline once those rent boosts come in, I put in a table that shows you 0 to 2 super rent boosts a month to what multiplier, 40 or 50, and there you can see the break-even point when you would be officially an endgame player. KC Fan, a member of the Beer Money Network, has a calculator that we have been using for a while now, and he's added a new feature called the break-even tier, 
which allows you to see what your break-even tier is depending on how many Super Rent Boosts events there are a month and the boost tiers in your country if you want something a little bit more accurate. Now I did check my math with this Atlas Earth calculator to make sure I did the math right. Of course, this is if you believe what is on the Atlas Earth website is the actual Canada tier, which I'm pretty sure after hearing from at least three Canadians on my channel giving comments, this is not the case. I have been hearing them talk about having 5X, 4X, and 3X tiers, and so I asked them for how many parcels they have. Uh, the one with the 4X was actually uh, talking with me on a DM as well. Uh, it makes me wonder if Atlas Reality did leave better steps to keep parcel power maximums at 1500. I'm actually starting to wonder if those cutoffs, in fact, uh, stop with the parcel power at 1500. So, given that, I have these projected numbers for 5x, 4x, and 3x tiers. And if you're Canadian, you can probably check with these to see if your tier is at this point. 5x capping out at 300 parcels, so 251 to 300. 4x caps out at 375, so 301 to 375. And 3x from 376 to 500. Now, I don't know if this is actually happening. I'm only going off what three people have said about their tier beyond 6x. And if you are a Canadian player with more than 250 parcels, please do put a comment on the comment section. I want to know what tier you're at. But I assume that this is the tier. Um, it does change the strategy a bit. Uh, so I'm going to put up here right now. I actually haven't done the calculations as of the time of this recording. But I will have something on here that shows you the break-even point if this tier level is the case. Now, the reason for the much lower parcel power for Canadian players, as mentioned before, is because of advertising being a lot cheaper in Canada than in the U.S., Many other beer money apps with Canadian ports have the same issue like Swagbucks and Microsoft Start. To give you an example, Microsoft Start only allows three points of search in Canada and the UK, but in the United States it is five. So the lowered earnings is to be expected. There's also a drop in earnings for minigames. Um, the starting pot, from what I understand, I'm told, is 10000 compared to 40000 here. The top players in Canada are making a profit of about a parcel or two per I would say. Now for buying parcels, the Atlas Buck Packs come in the typical 100, 315, 900, and 2400 Atlas Buck packages, but they are a bit more expensive. 100 Atlas Bucks is worth $7, 315 worth 20, 900 worth 50, and 2400 worth $130. So I have the parcel rates here based off of that number and comparing them to the United States. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is a transferring to Canadian or not, but uh, I'm going to have you guys do your research on that one. Um, I'm pretty sure, though, they are um, in Canadian, though, at least on the uh, Google Play one, from what, I was, uh, from what I understand, anyway. Average parcel is the same as the U.S. at $0.000000148 per second, or about 4.66 cents a year. So worst case scenario, if you buy the 100 Atlas Buck package for $7 before tax, it would take you unboosted about 150 years to get your money back compared to 107 for an American. Boosted, assuming you start at 20x and stay there, it will take you seven and a half years to get your money back compared to three and a half years for an American. And remember, an American starts at 30x. Now, the best case scenario that doesn't involve an app is the 2400 Atlas Buck package for $130. If you buy this package and put down 24 parcels, it should give you an average of $1.11, well, $1.1184 a year. So $1.12 roughly a year. And unboosted, it would take you 116.22 years to get your money back and 5.8 years if you boost 24-7. This compared to an American who would get their money back in 89.4 years unboosted and 2.98 years boosted 24-7, and that is assuming they don't drop off in tiers in the meantime. Disclaimer on this, however, and I want to throw this disclaimer on, I'm assuming that the payouts in Canada are going to be in their local currency. There are heavy rumors that it will be in U.S. dollars rather than Canadian dollars, and if this is the case, then this will change significantly. 
So again, I'm going to do a little bit more research and when I'm ready, that optimal strategy guide will put a little bit more information on it. Finally, if you go on the browser app, there is no change. Everything costs the same American or Canadian. The only difference being you'll pay in Canadian dollars. So you'll have the proper exchange rate supply. I believe it's like $75 Canadian for Explorer Club right now a month. And considering that Canada is getting the short end of the stick just about everywhere else, it's nice to see one place where things are relatively more equal, at least according to what I hear. Now the moral of the story here and what to do, first off, use the free ads. Yeah, I understand it's just one Atlas Bucket ad instead of two, but that still allows you to pick up a free parcel every other day, combined with the wheel and other free options like mini games. and again, can't be free. I also feel like Canada is going to be more dependent on how many people will play the game as they started the minigames off with a lower starting pot of 10,000, indicating it would be dependent more on other players to play the games to grow the pot. Maybe they will increase the starting pot? Who knows? And finally, the best strategy here isn't the same as the US. Get to 65, but only stay there until you can get enough Atlas Bucks to go get yourself to 130, and then build yourself up to 150. I'm still trying to figure out what the badge system is like. I'm only going based off the US badge system right now. And hopefully as I get more information, I'll be able to share it and build the best optimal strategy guide for Canadians. Again, it's gonna be coming up around July, maybe early August, we'll see. I currently have it uh, tabbed for July right now though. So that is the video and I'm sorry, I didn't do many live screens or anything, but for me to do that, it would require me to use a VPN to connect to Canada. And if I did that, I would risk losing my own account. I'm actually going to try to see if Atlas Earth support will let me look at Canada with my account temporarily to see their features. I'm not going to grab land or anything. I just want to see what else I can grab for that optimal strategy guide come July. An alternate, of course, is feedback from Canadian Atlas Earth players. So, as I've said before, I want to hear from you Canadians. Uh, I want information on reinvesting mini games. Uh, any corrections to this video? if you can log on to the browser version. This would help me greatly as that will allow me to build an accurate fourth edition strategy guide that will include Canada rates come July. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Beer Money Engine. I will see you all later, everybody. Bye.